Hell, Judgment, and Eternity Part 15 Heaven and Eternity Chapter 1 Heaven and Eternity are usually thought of as future afterlife experiences. Heaven is traditionally seen as the reward we get for being saved. We are taught to think of it as the opposite of hell. Here are a few of the things that the Bible says about the heavenlies. The word heaven in the New Testament is the Greek word uranos or epuranios. It speaks of heaven, the sky, the heavenlies. It sometimes describes something we have to hope for in the future. Matthew 8 I say to you that many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. First Peter 1 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born from above to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Heaven, as a place we go to after we die, is not spoken of in much detail in the Bible. That is not the main emphasis. But Hebrews 12 verse 23 seems to be telling us something of this future heaven. Those who are chosen to be the firstborn in Christ are described as being already enrolled in the heavenlies. And what about John 14 verse 1? In my Father's house are many mansions, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. These words are comforting, but they may not 
be speaking primarily of a place called heaven. These are word pictures with many meanings, such as abiding in Him, and the preparation of dwelling places for the Holy Spirit. The rest of chapter 14 gives plenty of clues. It often simply speaks of up in the sky above, or where God the Father is, and where He speaks from. Luke 12 and Matthew 16 When you see a cloud in the sky rising in the west, Immediately you say, a shower is coming. You know how to analyse the appearance of the earth and the sky. But why do you not recognise this present time as being genuine? Matthew 23 You may not call anyone on earth your father. For one is your father, he who is in heaven. But the heavenlies and eternal life are most often about interacting with God while we are in our mortal flesh. First John 3 We have passed out of death into life. He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has age-lasting life abiding in him. These eons of life, often called eternal life, are to be in us now. This age-lasting life grows as we begin to know God and learn who Christ is. John 5 He who believes has age-lasting life and has passed out of death into life. John 17 This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Romans 8 To be spiritually minded is life.
2 Corinthians 4, the life of Jesus is manifested in our mortal flesh. In the heavenlies now, not in the future, wickedness and rulers are being replaced by the Lordship of Christ. Ephesians 3 So that the mystery of Christ and the wisdom of God might now, at this present time, be made known through the Church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the age-lasting purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 6 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armour of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. It's commonly assumed that these rulers and powers are out in the world around about us. But the only significant ongoing daily impact we can have is on rulers in our own old flesh self. We are taught by the Holy Spirit to let Christ have more and more Lordship. As this happens, there are less and less of our works and less of our being in control of things. God enlightens us and we taste a sample of what is in the heavenlies and of the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 6 Having been enlightened and having tasted of the heavenly gift, and having been made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and having tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the age to come, Thank you.
we have been seated and blessed in heavenly places while in this life, in preparation for coming ages. Ephesians 1 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 2 You formerly walked according to the age of this world. Age is eon in the Greek, the same word usually translated as eternity. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in coming ages he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. The old flesh is described as an age, an aeon, in verse 2. This age is replaced by the heavenlies. Even though it is hard to understand, the scriptures say that the age of the world, this age which is ruled by forces other than Jesus, is not restricted to our idea of time and sequence. More and more of our heart is being turned to the things of the heavenlies. Matthew 6 Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. As we learn to walk in the kingdom, we have an impact on what happens here and now in heaven or in the heavenlies. Matthew 16 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in the heavenlies. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in the heavenlies. Chapter 2 What does the Bible say about forever, about eons and eternity? Aeon doesn't speak only of future eternity, but speaks of this world, this age, or ages to come, or ages past. Second Timothy 4 This Present World World, aeon in the Greek, is lasting during an age. Titus 2 and Galatians 1 In the present age First Corinthians 1 The world Matthew 12 in this age or in the age to come. Acts 15 The Lord makes these things known from the ages. Ephesians 3 Hidden from the ages in God Hebrews 1 and Hebrews 11 Through Christ God made the worlds God only wants us to remain in the aeon of chastening of troubles and fires for a limited period of time. Jonah 2 I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit. When Jonah ended up in the fish's stomach, he described his trouble as forever. It was for three days. Forever was determined by how long it took for him to be softened enough for his heart to change. The nation of Israel took longer. Altogether, they spent 40 years in the wilderness being corrected.
Hebrews six, judgment lasting during an age. In some other translations, this says eternal judgment. Second Thessalonians one: Those who do not know God. And those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus will suffer justice. This justice is destruction, lasting during an age. Away from the face of the Lord. And from the glory of His strength, this destruction is not of the whole person, but of the parts which are the old nature. Note, the New Testament only speaks a very Few times of an aeon of punishment, but it speaks dozens of times about aeons of life. See link twenty-two. Forever, eternally, eons, ages. Chapter Three. What does the Bible say is endless? The Bible describes God and His glory as being endless. Verses describing endlessness are virtually all relating to the endlessness of God and His glory. Luke one. Jesus' kingdom will have no end. Isaiah nine, there is no end to the increase of his government. Daniel seven, his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which does not pass away. Psalms forty-five. Your throne, God, is for ever and ever. Revelation five. To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor. And glory, and dominion for ever and ever. What follows after this lifetime is an age 
of countless ages. Daniel 7 The saints of the highest one receive the kingdom and take possession of the kingdom forever to the age of the ages. Ephesians 3 To God is the glory in the assembly in Christ Jesus to all the generations of the age of the ages. Each of those ages will be uniquely fashioned by God. Forever, eternally, eons, ages. The word eternal is used traditionally to speak of forever and ever without ceasing. If this is the only way it is translated, then it may prevent a person from understanding the true meaning of many Bible verses. For example, Jonah spoke of being in hell forever, but he got out after three days. Two thousand years ago, Jesus was manifested at the full completion, the end of the ages, eons. The same word as eternity. Greek, eon. The words, eternal, eternity, and forever, in the Bible, are usually the Greek word eon, which speaks primarily of ages. These ages might be past, present and future. One broader aspect of eon, is what is spoken of in the Bible, about the end of the ages, up till Christ, and comparing that with this age we are now in. However, I believe that if each of us will listen, God wants to start showing us more of what these things mean, and not within the limited human understanding of time. But to start off, here is a simple overview. Past eons. Eon is used here in the phrase, literally the times of the ages. These seem to indicate past. Ephesians 3, verse 9. Colossians 1, verse 26. Romans 16, verse 25. 2 Timothy 1, Verse 9 Titus 1, verse 2 Present yarns Ages that we are in now Mark 4, verse 19 The worries of this age, yarn Romans 12, verse 2 do not be conformed to this age, Eon. Galatians 1, verse 4 Jesus gave himself for our sins, so that he might rescue us from this present evil age, Eon.
Matthew 25, verse 46. We may find ourselves experiencing a meon of life. But in other aspects of our life, we may find we are in a meon of chastising and pruning and correcting. The time of chastening should lead to life. I find it helpful to think of yarn whenever it is used for the present age, as during an eon. The Concordant Bible, which translates literally as in the Greek concordance, uses the word eonian, or age during. Young's Literal Bible usually says it this way. Perhaps this can be thought of as lasting for an age. During an era. Throughout a particular period of time, until. Lasting for the duration of a period. Or for an age whose length may be short or long. Future eons, ages to come, eons and eons. Mark 10, verse 30. The ages to come. Ephesians 2, verse 7. The ages to come. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today, and to the age, forever. Is our understanding of time the same as God's? His thoughts are not the same as ours, so we shouldn't be trying to fit his ways into a format which suits our mind with its limited view. Isaiah 55, verse 7 Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him turn back to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him and turn back to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So will my word be, which goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. We have to be careful not to try to fit God into our own mental understanding of time and ages. God isn't locked inside time. We as human beings try to work things out by putting them in a timeline, and then try to make God fit into it. He is not so easily confined by our theories of eons and ages. There is much revelation that we will receive about these things, especially as we lay down the pride of our own mental understandings. For example, 
Could it be that these eons spoken of in the Bible needn't be put off into the future? Just as heaven or the heavenlies shouldn't be. Would that mean then that scriptures we thought were for the future are for right now? Perhaps the ages to come are ages which we should be expectantly looking for. Because they are either in the process of coming or are about to come very shortly. The metaphors of God's word can only be unlocked as we turn our faces in awe and worship towards him and ask for his life to come and begin to unveil what remains hidden to us. See, the disclosing of the enigmatic truths hidden in God's word. You will find throughout these writings that I have quite often left traditional translations such as eternal and everlasting without any comment. This was Hell, Judgment and Eternity Part 15 Thank you.